Okay, so I'm going to do a quick review on the last two classes in Flash. Um, this may be this will probably be broken up into multiple videos. So um, again, I may go a little faster in this than I did in class. Um, I probably will go faster than I did in class, um, but that's because you can back up and rewatch it. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, this is what we went over Tuesday. This is the bouncing ball example. Um, okay. So again, I'm going to go ahead and set my um, my scene to be something a little larger, 1280, 720. Again, this is the lowest form of HD or lowest level of HD. And as you'll see in here, we um, you know, we have some of these settings we can change if we want a you know, slightly different colored background or a blue sky or whatever. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that if we want to. Um, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can kind of see what's going on in my scene. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start creating some objects in here. I'm going to create a ground plane for my character, or for my uh, my scene to occur in. I'm going to make this green, something nice. Uh, and then I'm just going to select all of that, and I'm going to go ahead and make my stroke something a little bigger so it just looks kind of interesting. There we go. Maybe, uh, maybe a little smaller than that. Maybe do something more like six. Okay. And so we have that. I'm gonna also create an, with the oval tool. Um, I can hold shift to sort of keep it constrained to its size. And I'll draw. I won't actually have it interact with uh, the object so it doesn't mess up. So we're gonna select that. We'll change the color of the ball to something a little more bright. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create another rectangle. And again, I'm not going to have those overlap just because uh, it, it, we, we've seen that if we have objects overlap when we release them, then it chops holes in it. So that's not what I'm wanting right now. So we're just going to put this up here. And again, I'll change its color um, just so we got some, some variety in here. Maybe something like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is in our library, <clears throat> you'll see that we currently have nothing. Um, so this is our stage. This is the scene, or scene one, which we can have multiple scenes. But um, I'm going to create um, symbols. Okay, so right now these are objects that you know if I move them, they'll copy over each other, and and so this is this is just kind of how we're painting these objects. But I'm going to convert it to a symbol because then it has a little bit more. Um, that we can do with it, a couple more options that we can do with it. Um, so I'm going to hit F8. Apparently it's not working. I don't know why my shortcut key is not working. Another way we can actually do this to create the symbol is to go to modify and say convert to symbol. And so this will be ground. Okay. Now um, <clears throat> what we can do to actually see these individually is if we select all of them and right click we can say distribute to layers and you'll see that now we have a layer for each of these objects. Okay, and I'll just delete layer one. Um, so this is a little different than how we did it in class but this will maybe help it um, seem a little more clear. And you can see that, <coughs> excuse me, um, if I move these objects over top of each other and let them go now they're not they're not uh, destroying each other. And so we can change the order in which they're arranged, or we can just sort of set them up like however we want. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like this. And so what we're going to do is this object, again, we're going to think of this as a container for the drawing, or a container for an, another uh, symbol or asset. Um, so if I double click on this, we actually go into that symbol. Okay, and now at this point, I can start animating it if I would like. Um, so we're within the ball symbol, and you can see that because we have scene one, and then we can, we're in ball. And if we want to go back to scene one, we just step back to it. Um, so let's go into it, and we're going to go ahead and start animating this ball, um, doing a little bounce. So we'll do maybe 30 frames. Okay? And so I'm going to highlight this, and you'll see that we have a keyframe here. A keyframe is really just a designation. It's a, It's like saying this is the drawing that we're going to be looking at at this point in time. Okay, So I can you know, insert a keyframe here. I can actually delete that 
And so now there's no drawing there, and my drawing for keyframe 2 is maybe this squiggly green thing. And so we, we'll just flip back and forth between um, the ball and the squiggly green thing, right? So I'm going to undo that. <coughs> So that's all that's happening when we're setting a keyframe. So if I insert our keyframe on frame 30, okay, now we have um, the ball is here on frame 1, and it's going to hold that frame, or it's going to hold that version of that up until frame 29, and then it's going to switch to this, which, which in this case happens to be the exact same, um, the exact same object. Um, so about halfway through this, um, yeah, we'll say about frame 15, right? I'm going to insert another keyframe. Okay, And so by doing that again, I'm just saying this is what that ball looks like on frame 15, and it's going to stay there until, until we reach frame 30. And uh, what I can do now is I can actually alter frame 15. If I hold shift, it will keep it constrained. And so I can have the ball bounce that high. And if I hit enter, we'll actually be able to watch the animation play. Okay, so we're seeing a bouncing ball, and we're seeing the keyframes that are related to that bouncing ball. Um, <clears throat> so again, in traditional animation, how this would be done is um, the animator draws these keyframes, and then an in-betweener would go in here and would fill in all of the drawings in between. Um, well, and we're going to use Flash as our extremely unwise illustrator. We're going to do that by selecting the keyframe, right-clicking on it, and going to Create Classic Tween. You'll see what happens is now it just travels upward, gets to this point, and then now it's just going to hold that keyframe until we snap to there. So we can make this a classic tween too. And so now we got this object that animates up and down. Right. The problem with this is it feels like it's ping-ponging, right? It, it, this is not um, the, the correct spacing. And if we were to click our ghosting here to where we could see the entire range of animation, you'll see the distance it travels each frame is the same exact distance every time. And so that's the, that's the biggest problem with that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going um, to adjust some of this. We're going to adjust this with easing. Okay, and again, to play this animation, we just hit enter, and it will play it. Okay, you also have your play buttons down here along the bottom. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the easing, and this is going to... Um, let me actually show you this on a new, on a new file so I can draw it. Um, so let's say that we were, we were charting... Um, um, pretty much anything. The, the, the number of, you know, times a, a car horn honks um, over a minute, right? Um, and, and so we, we or whatever, whatever we want to chart, right? We have two axes here. We have, um, uh, like, a number of honks, right? And then we have time. Okay, and so if we were charting this, and let's say that it's it's honking at a very steady interval, honk, honk, honk. How that's going to happen is over time we will we will just draw a dot. So you know at the very beginning of the time we start recording, we're going to hear a honk there, and then we go a, a certain number of time, and we're like, there's the next honk, and so we have two honks, right? So we have two honks, um, three honks at the same time, and so as we start charting these things we're going to start seeing a graph. And so this would work with anything, and motion over time as well. And so that's actually what we're measuring with animation, is motion over time, right? The cha uh, change over time. And so what we're getting out of this is a straight line. And that's why we end up with very um, boring animation, because what we're doing is we're tr or very linear animation. What we're getting here is this ball is moving the same distance per frame. Every frame is doing the same distance. So if we were to take away time and honks, basically what we're having is distance. Um, so that we have distance, and over here we still have time. I don't know why I marked it out, but we still do. So basically what we want is we want this thing to travel um, bigger distances early. You know, like we want it to, to go 
um, instead of, let's get a different color so we can see this, instead of going short distances early, we want to go big distances early, but then as it gets closer to this time where it gets to the top of the animation, we want the amount of distance it travels to sort of decrease like this, right? And so what that's going to look like, that curve that we want it is like that. So what we're doing is we're adjusting how it eases in to that point, okay? And so that's why we call this ease. Um, why did that? There we go. So if we go in here and we adjust the ease on this, we can do that by selecting the keyframe and going to ease under our properties. Um, we're going to change how that eases in and you'll, you'll see that the distance that travels as it goes up actually gets shorter. Okay, And so we want to do the opposite ease there. We want, to, we want it to come down in the opposite way, so we'll go that to negative 100. And so now if we were to watch that animation, it looks like that. Let's turn off our ghosting and turn on our loop. And so we would see this playback as that. Now what we have now though that's kind of weird is it kind of feels like it sticks to the ground, right? Just for one frame as it gets to the bottom, it feels like it kind of sticks there. So the reason for that is because we're repeating this frame. We have this frame at the very end of the animation, and we have the same exact frame at the very beginning of the animation. Um, and we needed that to be able to figure out where the ball goes. Like We, we needed that as almost like a placeholder or, or a reference point. Uh, but now we don't need it anymore. So let's just right click here and insert a keyframe right before, and then we can delete, remove that frame. Okay. And so now if I turn this back on, it may not play it right. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. To actually make that work, you have to take that back and take that back to there. Whatever the reason is. So that's feeling a little better, right? <clears throat> so we can um, now, we, again, we are still inside of the ball symbol. We are still inside of this as a think of it as a folder we're inside of that folder where we're editing the art and if I go back out to my scene this is just one frame right here with the ball symbol in it right and so we're gonna say now we want this to be 120 frames with the ball symbol in it I'm gonna go ahead and take that loop off and so now what we're gonna get is the ball bouncing for 120 frames right um, so what I can do now is I can also change um, sort of the position of this symbol over time within the scene. So I can still animate this symbol in the scene as well as within the symbol. So um, the way I like to think of this is, um, let's say I'm playing a video on my cell phone, let's say this is my cell phone, and I start playing a YouTube video of a cat playing a cello or something and then I start moving that phone across the room right that video is still going to be playing on the the phone but the as the ball or as the uh, phone moves across the room it's moving as well right um, so we're going to do that um, to this ball let's say on our first frame here of this we're just going to slide this all the way off the screen okay or all the way off our stage at least and then on the last one we're going to take that, again I'm holding shift to kind of constrain it, drag it all the way there. And so what's going to happen now is it's going to bounce in space and then pop over there. And that's because that's all that's happening with that symbol, right? Um, but if I right click on here and say create classic tween, now that, that symbol's location is just going to transition all the way across from one point to the other. Right? So we get this ball bouncing across our screen. Um, okay. So we have that now, and so now we can go within this symbol. Yeah, I'm going to go back here to the beginning, double click on it, and so if we hit enter now, we're just going to watch that ball bounce in place right there, right? Um, so the things that are missing in this now are um, some squash and stretch. Um, and so we can do squash and stretch a couple different ways. One, we can, uh, but, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use this free transform tool, and I'm just going to um, use that to sort of change how the ball looks on some of these keyframes. Okay, so now what we're going to get is it's going to sort of go from squashed on the ground up to normal, right? Um, the problem with that though is um, 
we get a little bit of a we don't get that transition of energy right the ball sort of absorbed the energy from its previous hit in this pose so now we need that feeling that the ball is like you know pushing back at the ground and, and launching itself back up into the air and so to do that we're going to insert another keyframe here and that's where we're going to put our stretch right. and so what we get now is that so the problem with that is now is we need another stretch right here and you can do that a couple different ways I could grab this keyframe and copy it or I can just sort of manually make that happen um, something like that okay and so now if we watch this I feel like it gets a little too small And so that's what that's going to look like. And if we go back to our scene and watch, okay. and so that's looking pretty good, really. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is uh, we don't have to um, just have one of these symbols in the scene. I can put another one in right here, and oh, I you need to do this on a new layer. I always forget that. Um, so I can drag another ball into my scene here, drop it, and it's going to just bounce from there, right? And so I can do a lot with that. Um, again, all this is doing is playing that same layer again, so I can, you know, put this to start wherever I want to it. I can, um, I can shift it to scale it down. It's doing a weird thing when I scale it down. It scales toward that center point, um, but I'm all right with that. And so I just reposition it there, and so now i got a little bitty one bouncing in there. And so we can do a whole bunch of this stuff if we wanted to. I don't know if this will work or if it's going to screw stuff up. There we go. Um, so I mean, I could uh, very easily go in here, grab two of these, just drag them all. Um, I'm holding Alt when I drag them. All right. And so I can do this all day long. And I'm just duplicating this symbol, and so the, the symbol will just play in here all day. Um, now the interesting thing about this too is I can I can make changes to how this symbol plays. Right now, um, if I click on this, the symbol is going to play in a loop starting with frame one, right? Um, that symbol is, and so is this one. But if I decide I don't want that one to actually loop, I just want it to play it once and then stop. And I hit enter. It's going to play it once, and then it's going to stop, right? Um, and so there's a lot of different things I can do. I can have it um, hold a single frame. So let's say I just want it to hold frame 5 throughout the entire animation. It'll just play hold frame 5. Um, and something else I can do is I can actually have it hold frame 5 for a little while and then insert a new keyframe and have it start the animation back. Instead of doing any of that, I want to do loop. And I'm just going to go ahead and let that start on frame 1. And then this one, I'll let it start on frame, let's try three. And then this one, maybe frame, just skipping two frames, everyone, five. And so this one is frame seven. And frame nine. Frame 11. Frame 13 frame 15. And so now if we were to watch this, we get some, some pretty neat stuff going on, right? Um, now I'll notice that the ball is actually behind those layers, so I have to scoot that in front so I don't have that issue anymore, right? Um, so that's what we get. Um, so we, we can do one other thing though, um, and that is we can duplicate this ball. So I'm going to say, dup and I'm duplicating the symbol, okay? So all I'm doing is, I'm going to say ball lean. So my, my problem with it is as this ball bounces, it's stretching straight up and down. And that makes sense for these balls that are moving straight up and down. But the one that's moving forward, I would almost want it to stretch at an angle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this ball lean symbol, okay? And I'm just going to stretch my, or change my squash and stretch a little bit. So as the ball you know, bounces off the ground, it's going to lean forward because it's traveling in that direction. And as the ball comes back toward the ground, it's going to lean backwards a little bit because it's you know, sort of traveling in that direction. 
go back to my scene. Now, I haven't actually put this symbol in there yet. If we look, this symbol here is, this is still ball. Right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and say swap symbol. I'll choose ball lean and hit OK. And so now we'll watch and we'll see that the, the squash and stretch has got a little bit of a, a lean to it. Um, now there's actually a lot of interesting things we can do to mix this up. If I wanted to grab this symbol here on this frame um, inside of my properties, I can also do some color effects to it. I can change the tint of it. Um, I'll do my tint all the way down, but I'll say I want less green, purple, there we go. So I gotta turn the tint up. Apparently I don't know what I'm doing. Um, that. So we can do stuff like that. There's all sorts of different things we can do. And that's still the same symbol, we've just sort of changed it a little bit. And you'll actually, that's funny, you'll actually see that it changes back over time because uh, I did that as a keyframe. So. Uh, so there's a lot of different things we can do on this uh, on this object to uh, um, actually let's just go back to none. Um, so there's a lot of different things we can do on this object to um, uh, to have it change in its shape and form. Um, now here's the thing that is interesting though. We also have this tall thing layer or this tall thing symbol. So let's go into that and talk a little bit about changing the object shape. So we, you'll remember that we did this, but I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to say insert keyframe. I'm going to make this a little bit, a little bit longer. Insert keyframe. All right, and so we're back here to this point. <clears throat> and so at about frame 25, I'm actually just going to start changing this object's shape. And so if I grab these points, I can grab that, move it, and so you'll see as I mouse over a point, it turns into that sharp angle. But as I'm here, I'm over this rounded angle, and that just kind of lets me be able to deform this shape however I want, right? So maybe it's something like that. Right? And, uh, oh, sorry. I didn't actually set a keyframe there. Insert keyframe. Uh, so let's try that again. And so all I'm doing is I'm just changing how this object looks on frame 25, right? Just goes to 25, it holds that, and then pops back to 50. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try the shape tween, okay? And so when I click that, we're actually going to get a relatively good result. That's not bad. I can do insert, no, not insert keyframe, create shape tween, and it's going to do pretty decent at sort of leaning to one side and going back. And so that gets our hopes up. We're very excited. Let's see what else we can do with it. Insert keyframe. Can we do it again? Insert keyframe, except this time I want it to go to this other side. And so let's say I make that and this. And I try doing the shape tween again. And what happens is not what I want. Now, I'm confident there's probably things we could do to, to work with this and make this shape tween work. Um, but instead of doing all that, we're just going to try to solve this problem in a different way. Okay, I just want to point this out that the shape tween works a little bit. Uh, but you need to make sure that what you make it, make it do is a little bit simple. And so usually what I do is stuff like if I have, um, let's create a new layer. If I have an oval, right, here, and I want that to morph into um, something that is just slightly different, maybe, maybe that, sometimes it gets that right. There we go. So we get a little bit of that. However, if what you have is... this, right, and you are wanting that to morph into this, right? you're going to get a very weird result, 
right? You're just going to get whatever it can do. And then like that, and on some level, that's not bad. Um, but just know that you're, you're not going to, it's not going to squash and stretch in the same way that this is. Um, it's going to get confused on what part of the line goes to what. So it's just something you need to know and just be aware of. Um, so we have, but this is fine. We have 150 frame uh, animation of this thing sort of leaning from side to side, right? Um, and so let's just go ahead and look at that inside of our scene now. Oh, no. um, and so if we watch this now, it's doing that, right? So that's nice, but it's just doing it to that one side. And so we know it's 50 frames, so we can scrub through here and we can say frame 50 that did a complete cycle, right? This thing went all the way to that pose and then back. So what I'm going to do is, I'm sorry, I'm doing this on the wrong, it's the tall thing. I'm going to right click on it and say insert keyframe. And on this frame, again, we're just changing what this symbol looks like at this frame, right? Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to modify and then transform, and I'm just going to flip this horizontally. Okay, so now the next time it's just going to lean to the other side. So basically all we did is we mirrored that symbol. Right? And so then it's going to come back to there. It's going to stop again around frame 100. And so I'll split it again. So keyframe, uh, modify, transform, flip horizontally. And so now when we watch this, we get this very trippy um, animation of living geometric shapes. Okay, so again, don't sweat too much about the shape tween. It's always worth trying, but it's not usually going to give you the best results in the world. Um, just know that it's there, and you know sometimes you can you can get some decent results out of it. Sometimes you can't. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and then we will start back on um, some of the things that we covered uh, in the second Flash Animation class. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.